in instrumentation the most important part in case of atomic absorption spectroscopy there are two types of can say the sources radiation sources one hollow cathode lamp and electrode less discharge lamp both of them comes under radiation sources then we have plasma sources it includes inductively coupled plasma source and second is direct current plasma source for atomic emission spectroscopy there is flame atomization in this when we will study the types of flame flame structure and flame atomizers so this is the schematic diagram of atomic absorption spectroscopy uh, there are two parts to this particular instrument this half down here is responsible for convert converting solution into atomized cloud atom cloud and then this part the remaining part is spectroscopy aspect okay so that is related to so sample uptake is done into a nebulizer you understand what is nebula cloud of gas so nebulizer is something that produces that nebula in the nebulizer oxidant many times which is normal air is mixed with the sample then it is transferred into cloud chamber where it mixes with the fuel okay now in the cloud chamber if the droplets of that cloud are large those large droplets are drained to the waste and the fine mist is then transferred to the burner in the burner you will get flame now the electromagnetic radiation source now don't confuse this hcl with the hcl acid it is hollow cathode lamp so that electromagnetic radiation source is made to fall on the flame in the flame there are atoms present those atoms will absorb some electromagnetic radiation and the remaining radiation will be passed to the monochromator the monochromator will select one wavelength that is characteristic of the sample or the analyte it will get detected amplified and recorded by output system so moving forward there is another representation of the same diagram now you observe it you will understand different parts of it there are labeling done there which are almost self explanatory okay let us see the sources of radiation in atomic absorption spectroscopy the radiation source of atomic absorption spectrophotometer should be should emit stable intense radiation of element to be determined usually the resonance line of the element that means we have seen the spectra of sodium if you want to analyze sodium the electromagnetic radiation source should contain sodium only in that case that source will be able to emit the lines which will be absorbed by the analyte if you want to analyze copper your analyte is copper the electromagnetic radiation source should also be made up of copper then only when the copper is heated or given energy in the radiation source it will emit only those wavelengths which will be absorbed by the analyte molecule in the flame i hope you understand this point now yes sir preferably yeah thanks for feedback preferably the resonance spectral line should be as narrow as possible okay as narrow as compared with the width of the absorption lines measured 
these lines should not be interfered from the other spectral lines which are not uh, resolved by spectrophotometers there are too much word plays going on it simply saying that you are dealing with only few of the wavelengths say 3 or 4 wave okay there should not be any other wavelengths present there okay that's it when we are talking width of the absorption we are talking about the set of wavelengths which are close to each other so ideally there should be only those wavelengths present which you are going to analyze now next point there should be no general background or other extraneous lines emitting within the band pass of the monochromator now this is very crucial point see the atoms are present in a flame and flame are bound to emit electromagnetic radiation but the situation should be such that suppose you are observing wavelength of say uh, 500 nanometer okay that 500 nanometer wavelength you are supposed to observe so flame should not emit any wavelength near that 500 nanometer the problem of using such narrow spectral line has been solved by adopting a hollow cathode lamp as a radiation source now let us see how that hollow cathode lamp works i will try to zoom into so you can see there is a, a, a bulb is there okay and at the bottom you have one anode which terminates into a ring and then you have a cathode which is a hollow cylindrical the cathode and anode they are separated by insulating disc but disc at the center is hollow so except this part the cathode and anode are otherwise separated from the surrounding at the far end there is quartz window let us see further working the construction the cathode consists of a hollow cup that contains element being analyzed oh i forgot this part to mention okay this cup okay this cup on its surface is made up of the same element that you are going to analyze if you want to analyze sodium it will be made up of sodium if you want to analyze copper it will be made up of copper if you want to analyze iron it will be made up of iron and so on therefore the atomic radiation emitted by hollow cathode lamp has the same frequency as that absorbed by the analyte atoms in the flame the anode is tungsten wire okay the anode is tungsten wire two electrodes are housed in a tube containing an inert gas so it is filled with inert gas say argon or xenon okay so inert gas is filled into it okay the lamp window is constructed either by quartz silica or glass now when you can use glass when you can use quartz when you can use silica any idea if the electromagnetic radiation is in the range of infrared radiation okay you can use glass even if it is visible range you can use glass if it is in uv region you have to use quartz if it is in uv region you may use fused silica focus on working now when a direct current voltage of 300 to 500 volt is put across the anode and cathode the atom of the the gas in the goes ionization uh, it should be filler gas should be filler gas in this term it is argon okay atoms of the filler gas undergoes ionization at the anode 
and are rapidly attracted by the cathode. At anode, argon will get ionized and then it will start traveling to cathode. So please note that first the gas is acquiring the energy, it is getting ionized. Then the fast moving ions strike the surface of cathode and are physically displaced and physically displace the surface metal atoms of the cathode into neon or argon gas. So by bombardment of these atoms on the surface of the electrode, uh, cathode, the construction material of the cathode get dislodged into surrounding gas, get displaced into the surrounding gas. Now, further collisions of the vaporized metal atoms from the cathode with the energetic filled gas ions result in the excited metal atoms which emit the characteristic spectrum of the metal used in the construction of cathode. So try to understand what is happening. These atoms are getting dislodged because of hammered, they, they, because of the hammering they get from argon gas ions. Now some of the atoms of the metal are now dislodged in the surrounding but still argon argon atoms, energetic argon ions are still pouring in their collision occurs and that collision increases the energy of that metallic atom. At one point the energy is sufficiently high, they come down to the ground state by, by emitting the characteristic electromagnetic radiation. Thus emission spectrum produced by hollow cathode lamp is a sharp line spectrum of the cathode material and fluid gas. The working is continued. The neon or helium gas filled in the hollow cathode lamp performs three functions. Uh, it may be argon also. It is the main source of current carrying capacity in the hollow cathode. Anode and cathode, they are not directly connected. So the current is carried by these ions. It dislodges atom from the surface of the cathode by bombarding on the cathode surface. It is primarily responsible for excitation of the ground state metal atom because it is getting bombarded on the atoms. The manufacturers recommend that current for the lamp should not be exceeded or the lifetime of the lamp may be considerably shortened. So for particular construction type, there will be fixed current that, that is recommended. Excess current may also give rise to self-absorption process, wherein the sputtered ground state atoms absorb same amount of energy resulting in the less intensity of the emitted. See, this is very interesting. Uh, see, suppose copper is the construction material. Copper is getting dislodged into the surrounding. Out of suppose 100 atoms that are dislodged, 50 are getting bombarded with the ionized atom of the argon. They are going to higher energy state and they are emitting the electromagnetic radiation characteristic lines. What if those lines are getting absorbed, those wavelengths are got absorbed by the other atoms of copper which are present in the argon, uh, you can say in the argon cloud, but not excited enough okay on the other hand if the source lamp is run below the recommended current the loss of intensity and the corresponding loss of selectivity will also result the pressure within the lamp is also critical the pressure maintained in the hollow cathode lamp is one torr to five torr if higher pressure is maintained the discharge tends to be unstable because there are too many atoms of the of the say argon and there is too much of current flowing so there is again problem if lower pressure are maintained the vaporization of hollow cathode material increases and operating temperature also increases now second type of the electromagnetic radiation source is electrodeless discharge lamp. Observe the construction here. Whichever element you want to analyze, 
suppose it is a copper again we will we will create a, a metal piece okay which will be inserted into into a tube the tube will be connected to vacuum the chamber this tube may be filled with low pressure argon gas and then this is sealed so in the tube you have only argon and that argon is maintained at low pressure now this entire assembly is then kept in a microwave in microwave that argon which is surrounding the metal will acquire the energy it will get ionized and then it will be bombarded on the copper and a similar process as in hollow cathode lamp will occur let us go in detail little bit in atomic absorption spectro spectrometer gaseous discharge lamp are also used these are also called as arc lamp this lamp are also called as arc lamp gaseous discharge lamp contains an inert gas at low pressure and a metal or metal salt instead of using metal copper or it may be some sort of copper that also be used these lamps are useful for the alkali metals zinc cadmium mercury it is difficult to make stable hollow cathodes from certain elements particularly which are volatile such as arsenic germanium and selenium an alternative light source has been developed in electrodeless discharge lamp edl this we have seen already let's see the working the seal tube is then placed in a microwave discharge cavity under the influence of microwave the argon becomes plasma it gets heated it becomes plasma and cause excitation of the metal sealed in the tube the emission from the metal is that of its spectrum it will emit the characteristic wavelength including the resonance lines that we discussed the intensity of the lamp is very high and they have been made it stable okay now we have done with radiation sources both of halo cathode lamp and electrolytic discharge lamp plasma sources we will discuss in next lecture